They're not the typical professional athlete. They have military responsibilities. If I tell them to be here at 06 tomorrow morning, they'll be here at 06 dressed in full uniform. Tomorrow is never promised in running. You know, you never know what's gonna happen. So, you know, when you go to deployment, you don't go there and chicken out. Be ready to die for the country. And, and that's the same thing when they put me on the starting line in running. That's the same mentality that I have. The U.S. Army is, is one of the factors that makes them as good as they are as athletes. Um, the discipline they bring is just um, amazing. Not making a team is you failing at your job, and, and the Army does not uh, take failure very lightly whatsoever. We're at one of the awesome trails that Colorado Springs has, so don't tell anybody about that. It's called Bear Creek Park, and it extends from, you know, miles in that direction, up the mountain in that direction, too. Today's just recovery, um, absolute recovery from uh, hard, long tempos yesterday. Work out on the track tomorrow, um, so really just recovery. This is everybody, let's go. World Class Athlete Program is a program to take the Army's very best athletes and put them against top-notch international competition. Probably the thing we hear the most is uh, Kenyan Americans or something like that. And you know, yes, they most of them were born in Kenya. There's there's no escaping that. That's that's a fact. However, they're all American citizens. They're all U.S. soldiers, and they're fighting for the country. Which is, I can't say that for every runner out there. All these guys have been in the U.S. for, you know, at the very least seven years, at the very most 15 years. After graduating high school in 2008, my brother told me you have to come to college in the United States and, you know, and the only way to do it was through running. Chalimo's gonna pass him! Chalimo. Oh, he just got him! I got into the United States 2010 August. And the outdoors, I won the 10K and the 5K NAIA. So I was 10K and the 5K national champion in NAIA. And, uh, after that, D1 schools start coming. These guys all competed in NCAA athletics. They had an opportunity to join the, the U.S. Army, which is a huge commitment and a huge risk. I've always wanted to serve since when I was back in Kenya. I was actually going to join in Kenya, and then uh, when I got a scholarship to come here, I had to weigh whether to do it for Kenya or to do it for you. I figured out, you know, getting a full scholarship for four years was a good thing to give back to the society. It was uh, fall, this time fall last year, where he kind of made that decision and he said, you know what, I'm going to look to join the Army and look to join the WCAP program, which meant we're not going to see you again for almost a year. When we have someone come in the Army, the first year is pretty much gone because they're not the same after six months of basic training. I wasn't prepared really well for some like strength training. Going over there and doing a lot of push-ups, pull-ups and all those things, it was kind of really hurting for my body. You're, you're doing 20-hour days, you're getting up early in the morning, staying up late, you're learning how to fire different weapons, you're learning self-defense, you're learning a lot of things that you never did in your civilian life. It's some addiction. I got addicted and I was like, man, I want to go to war right now. You know? That's, that's how I felt. Military has prepared me for that tough mentality. I can grind and go through any other type of pain. The way I train now is not the way I used to train in college. My first run in basic training, drill sergeant was like, okay, it's time to go. You know, like there was, it was one minute push-ups, one minute sit-ups, and one mile. So we did the push-ups, sit-ups, and then we went to the, to the mile, to the one mile run, and, um, and I ran like 4.10. And this guy, the drill sergeant was like, dude, where do you think you are? Where do you think you are, man? You haven't, you are not done yet, you know? 
So I think probably thought like I would run like most people, the fastest guy would run like six minutes. And, and eventually my drill sergeant went and Googled my name and he saw my times. And since then, they gave me a name in basic training, the Black Jaguar. So to be part of the WCAT program, you have to be nationally ranked or possess a, a specific time to get into the program. So not just anyone can get in. So after I swear in, I heard about the W Cup. The standard was 28, 15 for the 10K or 13, 32 for a 5K. Seeing my times, I had 29.08 in the 10K. So I signed the army in Hagas and I was supposed to ship in June. After a few weeks, I went to Mount Sac trying to shoot for 13, 32 for a 5K. I ran like 1338. Chad Rack ran 1338. I said, you know, it's good, but it's not quite there, and sorry, it's just, you know, we, we, it's a higher level. On the plane on the way back, Chad Rack was like, you gotta give me another chance. I was like, Chad Rack, that's not my style, man. You just tried. You went to the well. We can't keep doing it. And he got very emotional and said, this is my life. This is my dream. This is something that I wanna go for, and I've always done what you ask. Give me this chance. I said, all right, we'll take you back to Peyton Jordan in two weeks. Once again, Shadi is here to run fast. I was nervous, like, I don't want to disappoint Dave. And we got back out there, and he goes to the 5K in about 14.02 or 3 or 4. I was like, well, that dream's over. I remember Dave was at the side, and he was telling me, Shadrach, chill, they are going really quick, you know, just slow down, don't follow them. Shadi's still in the mix, back in seven. But then he closes in 13.32, so he PRs in the 5K in his second half. Hip Kachir looks good. This is a great race for Shadi. Four laps to go. I had him change his mind life, like, you're gonna run the world standard. Great race for Shadi. That was my breakthrough, you know, running that 27.36 with a school record, and that thing changed everything. When you get to watch some guys dream in a life-changing event, you know, either he goes back to Kenya and goes to work or he stays here and joins the WCAP. That's pretty special. If it was not him giving me that opportunity, I'd not be here sitting here now. Big catch right here. Let's get this started. Let's start at 213, 215 and go from there. We ready? 32, 33, 33. I think after 2016, um, a lot of other coaches and, and, and athletes started to regard us with respect uh, with regard to what we were doing, um, making those teams, Paul and his silver medal. The infrastructure that we have, the coaching that we have, the resources that we have, and that's what's contributing to them excelling on such a high level. I mean, there isn't a Kenyan who's qualified for the finals of the World Championships or, or the Olympics in the 5,000 meters, yet Paul is meddling two years in a row. You tell me why that is. Is that because of genetics? No, it's because we're doing it right. We have the structure to do it right, and, and that's because of America. Making the Olympic team and also like being Olympic silver medalist, I wasn't expecting to like do the way I did. Getting second and being the top American I had a banner like that. Somebody that I've, I've always looked up to, you know. Everybody in the army was watching it, you know, everybody was tweeting about it and being number two in the world, you know, getting silver, you know, we were all happy as a team and we know how hard you work. You know, I didn't go to bed for like two days after that. Go. 159. I have big goals. Whatever the mind can achieve, the body can do, you know? It's only a matter of time. Be in that type of shape, I mean, 1245 shape. Next year, I want to see myself, you know, doing under 13 minutes. My next thing now is to break 27 and hopefully to go for that American record in future, so. We really have a program and, and a team dynamic that is allowing us to really find out what potential these athletes really have. Runner set, go.
been as hard as our first mission. So if we've been called to any mission right now, we will number one to go there. If the army, if I get called upon tomorrow, I get my orders, they're like, hey, you gotta deploy to Iraq, Afghanistan. I won't tell them like, oh, I'm waiting for the 2020 Olympics to represent the United States. I'm a soldier first, and then I'm athlete later. We enlisted in the US Army. If duty calls, we're gonna answer you. They're as proud as they can be to represent the United States. They're not somebody who's going to qualify her team and pass on it because there's a better opportunity to do something else and make some money. They want to put on that vest. Why are they just called American runners or, or why aren't they just called uh, soldiers? Uh, and, and they're not all the time, so it's kind of, um, it'd give me a chip on my shoulder. Let us not, not focus on the differences in anything. Let's work together towards one big goal. I think every American should be proud to see how they excel because it's, it's because they're Americans.